Trendsetters shape our culture with what eventually becomes a norm. They create with instinct and produce with confidence. Some are behind the scenes while others in front of the camera. But it's rare to find someone successful doing both. Someone like Bill Boggs. We're right into Rayo's, one of the most famous restaurants in the world, with a man who's talked with Sinatra, Manilo, Warhol, Travolta, and just about everyone who's anyone. It's time to sit down with Bill Boggs, one TV talking tastemaker. Bill Boggs! Lisa! How are you? With you, how, ah, of course I'm okay. It's starting off good, I like okay, it. <laughs> We're going to Rayo's in East Harlem, one of the greatest destination restaurants in America. What are we gonna have? The king of all meatballs. Let's go. Off to Rayo's we go. So much of your work has really set the tone for television programming. From the inside looking out, how do you see TV? It's better than ever. There's more on television now than at any other time in history, and it keeps getting better and better and better. It's way more specific than it used to be. This is the, the platinum age of television. And a lot of I, I live through the copper yeah. or bronze age, but this is the platinum <laughs> age right now. <laughs> You've interviewed so many people. What have you learned from those conversations? Oh my God, that's a very good question. Early in my career, I interviewed Frank Sinatra. And I ran into him at a party, and I had interviewed Isaac Radim, the former Prime Minister of Israel. And Sinatra wanted to know, why did this one guy rise to the top? And I'm, I had no answer. And he looks at me with these cobalt eyes, and he said, listen, Billy, if you're going to be doing this your whole life, study these people. So I've been studying these people, and I think the number one thing that I would say is, they're very powerful because they know how powerful they are. At some point, tap into a fundamental thing where they believe in themselves. Well, you talk about success. Your book got what it takes. People who are successful telling their stories about how they became yes. successful. How do you become successful? The value of risk, really not being afraid to fail. Almost every successful person, like I interviewed Richard Branson, said, I like risk too much to be afraid of failing. There is a wisdom that you acquire by failing. So risk, learning from failure, absolute ability to overcome adversity total self-confidence and belief in yourself. And did I mention hard work? How do you define success? Waking up in the morning and giving it your best shot. And when you put your head on your pillow at night, you're able to say to yourself, I had a great day today because I gave it my best shot. And it doesn't always work that way, but that's my definition of success. Isn't it a blessing that we live in a country where people can at least take a shot at making their dreams come true? and being willing to adapt and change. You've adapted in your career. You've taken on so many different roles as executive producer. Yeah, Morton Downey mold. Jr. show yes. and comedy tonight. You broke the mold when it came to Morton Downey. I gotta give Bob Pittman credit for that, who now is president of Clear Channel. And Downey was interesting. People say that it's the antecedent of the Jerry Springer show. I said, well, that's partly yes and no. The Jerry Springer show is a normal show with crazy guests. The Downey show, was a show with normal guests and a crazy host. We could drive to Miami and I could tell you stories about more. President Nixon. Yes. The very personal experience with him. Years ago, I was an intern and Nixon shows up really, really late for the show. And he comes running in, Mr. Boggs, I have to go to the bathroom. He's fine. So he comes out and says, all right, let me meet the folks. And as he runs around me, I notice his fly is open. Grand Mal fly open. Oh no, Where a piece that? of the shirt is hanging out, revealing red, white, and blue underwear. And the producer is <laughs> looking at me, show rolls in a minute. So I go up and I say, Mr. Vice President, come with me. We go outside. Look, I don't know how to say this to you, sir, but your fly is open. Ah! Only in America. Sit. And he says, Mr. Bog, you must be a Republican because a Democrat would have gone out there and let me be. Tricky Dick Nixon. Next. Wow. <laughs> Is there anyone you've never interviewed who we'd love to sit down with? Bill Clinton. I would like to interview him purely on the basis of his own experience with himself, his own access of his own personal power. Nothing to do with politics. Everybody who met him from the time he was in eighth grade said, you're going to be president of the United States. What was there about him that led to that? And if you could sit down with Bill Box, what would be that first question? What advice would you give to somebody who wants to make their dream come true? And I would try to do an interview where I would help people. At the end of the day, when I can use what I've learned and help right. somebody else, I, it's been a big meatball of a day. What would you like to do next? I've been working on a, a YouTube channel, Bill Boggs TV, I've been, and my website. I'm putting an archival material there, and I'm just doing this 
kind of preserve my work. We're almost at Rayo's. I know you're hungry, so yes. you've had this vision before of celebrities and food coming together. The only thing I've ever invented in my entire TV career is the concept of interviewing people and eating at the same time. I did it on midday, did it at WNBC, and created Bill Box Corner Table. And the thing came to me. Remember Marty Feldman, Marty Feldman with the one eye in this direction? I happened to be down in Barbados. Every morning, he'd be on the beach first thing. So this one morning, I'd come down. He is smoking a joint, which is like the size of a chimichanga. I got a great idea. What is it? You say your show was on at lunchtime? People home watching are eating, right? They eat and watch. You eat an interview. So the whole thing was like one of those stoned ideas. Maybe he just had the munchies. <laughs> As a talk show host, who's your favorite? Regis, I like Letterman, John Stewart, that, that becomes a comedy show. O'Reilly, extremely good at what he does, as is Bill Maher. Probably the only person who would sit back here and say that, but it's true. O'Reilly and Bill Maher are excellent at what they do. If I look in the pantheon of, of talk show hosts over the years, David Frost was excellent as an interviewer, and as was the great Dick Cavett. A truly good talk show host is somebody who listens well. And if you're really listening, just as you have been, not looking at knows what's the next question going to be. And by listening, you create real conversation.